thank you for tuning in to Auto E-Clinic. My name is Aaron and this is Michael. Today we have a 1995 Honda Accord EX with an unwanted excessive amount of movement and vibration in the front suspension. We're going to replace the left front axle on this Honda. The axle boot is actually broken therefore it allows a lot of dust and debris to get in there. Of course it allows the grease to come out. So the axle is wore out and today we're going to show you how to replace it. We're going to start by removing the tie rod end. First get that pesky Carter key out of the way. I'm assuming it was a guy named Carter that designed these things. If I designed it, it would be called a Michael key. Once again, this is a tapered fit, so use your hammer and knock it out. Pops out with a hammer. We're going to go ahead and remove our axle nut. Got to remove our lower ball joint. Cast nut. And we're going to remove our bolt that attaches the strut to the lower control arm. We're going to tap the lower control arm because once again it's also a tapered lower ball joint. We should be able to pry it up and out. Tap your axle through. Wow, as you can see, the actual axle actually fell apart <laughs> in our hands as we pulled it apart. Wow, I can imagine this thing had quite a bit of vibration. I do recommend you don't let your axle go this long without replacing it. That's probably one of the worst I've ever seen. Now, I guess the harder part is to get the axle out of the transmission. We're going to raise it up to give you a better view of that. Okay. Take your pry bar on the back side of the axle and just pop it out. This one came out pretty easy. Sometimes they can be a little troublesome going in. There it is. Go use a pry bar to pull that lower control arm back down. Put your castle nut back on the bottom. Remember to get the teeth lined up where you can put your car key back in. We're going to have to lift up on here.
This will get our bolt back through our strut, strut to the lower ball joint. Go ahead and reattach the outer tie right in to the spindle. Make sure your castle nut lines up with the hole. Go ahead and put our carter key back through here. Put our axle nut back on. With a new axle, we do have a new axle nut. You'll see there's a notch in the axle. This allows you to put an indent in it so the nut doesn't back out. Don't forget your carter keys. We replaced the axle on that Honda Accord. Now replacing the axle is not a very complicated procedure, but it is a very dirty procedure. Got pretty dirty in that one. Now the axle shaft was on that car was worn excessively. We pulled it apart and the axle actually fell apart. Yeah, that's bad. Uh, now, axles can be complicated to diagnose and can be very, you know, just complicated to diagnose. I've had some under acceleration that'll cause a vibration and not under decel, or vice versa. I've had some that'll cause a vibration under deceleration, not acceleration. Some that'll just pop and click when you turn the wheel. Now, this one, once again, was way beyond time to replace it. I'm sure it was vibrating all the time. <laughs> exactly. Now, uh, we went back with the new axle that was aftermarket, Aaron. How do you feel about that as far as parts go? Parts wise, you have several ways you can go about it. Years ago when you rebuilt things more, uh, especially on half shafts like this, uh, you could take it to a local shop, they could take it apart and rebuild it. But this was time consuming. Uh, it was also costly, even though the axle was higher then. Then the aftermarket range started producing remanufacturers. They would go ahead and rebuild it, rebuild it and sell it. Uh, now the aftermarket, what they've come in and done is made new ones. Uh, if you go to the OE dealer, you can get a new one still, but you're looking at four to five times versus what an aftermarket new one would cost you. Correct. I know back when I started in the business over 10 years ago, 15 now, uh, we actually would have rebuilt them myself. And that was, the, at that point, the cheaper way to go as far as taking the grease out, cleaning them out, putting the grease in it, new boots. And then they came up with the, the rebuilt ones that you can buy at the parts store, which were pretty cost affordable and now they've got the brand new ones you can buy that are very cost effective and thus far I've had no problems with them. Maybe less, it's definitely less than 10% out of the new ones that I buy that end up bad so I feel really good about them. We've had good luck out of them. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. The only thing you don't want to do is to go with the split boots. Uh, that's something that you can actually, uh, if you have a tour boot, that you can put on while the axle is in the car. Um, what's been your experience with those, Mike? <laughs> Hate them. Hate them. Won't do it. By the time I put a split boot on there, I can, exactly. I can go ahead and uh, charge the customer the same amount of time and just put a new axle in. The customer's exactly. going to come out much better just with the new axle. And more than likely, if it's been tore, there's probably water and debris in it anyway, so the joint's going to be damaged. Correct. Anytime you put a new boot on there, if you go that route, you're going to want to clean out all the old grease and dirt and fill it up with new grease. So I don't see a split boot being any kind of an effective way to repair the, the axle. No, not at all. We greatly appreciate you for tuning in to Auto E-Clinic today. Look us up on Facebook, like our page, check us out on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, Auto E Clinic. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, hit us up at AutoEClinic at gmail.com. Great. And remember, the zombie apocalypse is coming. Don't become a zombie.